Hello crafty friends, welcome back or welcome if it's your first time here. Today we are going to be creating Valentine's crafts using products from Baker Ross. I make a whole bunch of crafts in this. They're great for personal crafts or for gift ideas. So let's get started. For this first craft, I'm going to use some air dry clay. This might be something that you've seen me do before if you've been around on my channel for a while, but here I'm using some air dry clay and just flattening it out with my hands. You can use a rolling pin as well, but I like to get messy with this and work with my hands. And then I have a polystyrene cone. Now this cone, usually you would think Christmas and you're thinking, Laura, what are you doing? It's January, I've just recovered. Um, no, this is definitely a Valentine's craft. So we're covering this cone in clay and we're going to turn it into a gnome. So I'm just pressing that clay on to make sure it's well and truly stuck. And then to smooth it out, I'm rolling it on this glass chopping board. I'm just using this to protect my desk. Then I'm using some water and my fingertip just to smooth out any of those fingerprints and edges. Now I'm going to work on the hat and the nose. So for the hat, all you need to do is roll out a long sausage of clay. <laughs> so once you've got that ready, you'll then create the nose, which will just be a circular piece of clay. I'm just forming it together by rolling the clay in my hands and then just working it with my fingertips. There's no rhyme or reason here, just whatever looks right to you. You can have a giant nose, a small nose, it could be pointy. I just went with a simple circle. Then I used one of my clay working tools to scratch the back of the nose and also the face where it's going to sit. And that will just help the two pieces of clay to stick together. And again, I'm just using some water to smooth out any edges. Again, I'm using my knife tool and just um, creating some slashes in the gnome where I want the brim of the hat to be. Again, this is just to make the two pieces of clay stick together really well. So you can see once you add that, it really starts to take shape. You might have been watching this thinking, how is that a gnome? It's just a triangle with some clay on it. But I think once you add the gnome and the brim of the hat, it really kind of takes shape. So I'm smoothing that out at the back and then I'm going to add the beard detail. I'm using another one of the clay tools just to scratch in that beard design. Again, kind of no rhyme or reason here. You just want some squiggly lines until you've got as full of a beard as you desire for your gnome. Then you'll want to leave all of this to set. And once it's completely dry, I left mine overnight and it was completely dry, but I did have the heating on the whole time. So you may find you have to leave it a little longer. So the paints that I'm using to paint in the beard and the hat are from a pinks and purples pack of acrylic paint. I'll show them a lot in this video. Once that is dry, you can then use some paint pens. These came in a set, you can see them all on the screen here. And I'm just drawing on some little hearts on my Valentine's gnome hat. That big heart in the center doesn't seem to be showing up too well on the video, but you'll see it a little more clearly in the pictures later on. And then I'm gonna to switch to the white pen and add some scalloped edging all around the brim of the hat. And you can do whatever design you want here. You could even put like initials inside of the hat. And I think they make really cute Valentine's Day decoration or Valentine's Day gifts. I think these would be really cute to make for even like grandparents and things if you're doing them with your kids or if you are the child in your house like myself, then you can just make it for yourself for on a shelf. So moving on to the next project, I'm going to be using these little craft trays. They come in a two pack as well as paints and some acrylic binder. This is what the trays look like when they're assembled and I'm going to decorate these. So I decided to do some paint pouring. I took each of those acrylic paints and poured a small amount into some paper cups and added just a little bit of that acrylic binder and water. And this is just a recipe that I use for paint pouring. It seems to work pretty well. To be honest, I'm pretty sure you could have just used these ready mix paints as they were. I think they would have made really pretty paint pour art. Now, if you're not familiar with paint pouring, don't do this. Did you see that? Do you see I just dropped my little stick? <laughs> Instead, what you want to do is just slowly pour your paints into a cup. This is one way to do an acrylic pour and then just pour it right on top of whatever you're working on. So you can see that I'm starting with the wooden base and I'm pouring the paint over the top. Now I've propped up this wooden base by adding little push pins. You can see them on the extra pieces over to the right. 
I just added drawing pins into the back so I'd have something that kind of elevates this up off the base of this tray that I'm working inside of. This is just there to catch all of those paint drips because what you want to do with a paint pour is, I guess as the name suggests, <laughs> pour the paint around and then stretch that paint by tilting and turning your piece of art until the paint looks exactly as you want it to. Do let me know in the comments if you tried paint pouring before or if you'd like some more information and I could make a video dedicated just to this. So I'm letting the paint kind of stretch anywhere where it's kind of finding it a little difficult to move. I'm just tapping the canvas with my finger and this breaks the surface tension of the paint and helps it to flow a little easier. Now I'm going to work on the long sides and the short sides and it's the exact same process. I created myself another pour cup by tipping in various different colours of the paint. And then I'm just lifting them up and moving them around until that paint stretches to cover all of these pieces nicely. Now this will take a little bit of time to dry because there's an awful lot of paint on there, but I just set them off to one side until they were completely dry and look how it looks. Now I wanted to cover the back where it was a little messy. You could have taped this off beforehand, but I knew I wanted to paint the edges anyway with this being like a 3D piece. If it was a canvas, I would have just left it, but I painted the backs using the purple color. So then once that's dry, it's ready to assemble by pushing all the pieces together like a jigsaw. And look how cute it looks. I was so impressed with how this turned out. Now I did finish off the tops again with a paint pen, just adding some extra paint to those edges and that is the tray finished. And to protect this, you could add a coat of PVA glue or varnish or resin just to seal everything in and protect it with it being a tray. It is going to have some wear and tear of having things put on it. Now that first one turns out so cute, I couldn't help myself. I made the second one as well. You can see I use slightly different colors. Again, all from that same paint pack, I'll have it linked below. But I decided to use just the lighter colors. So I omitted the purple and the red from this one and it just looks so dreamy. This is how it looked once the inside and the outside was painted and it was fully assembled. Okay, so for the next project, bear with me, we're gonna stick with paint pouring for just a minute longer. Once you've got your supplies out, you're gonna wanna make a whole bunch. <laughs> so I grabbed some mini canvases. Again, I've put little thumbtacks in the back to act as feet, I guess. So it raises it up off the cardboard that I'm working on to catch the mess. How fun is that? So I created these two cups and then flipped everything over and dumped out the paint. This is again just another way to create these pores and it is so fun. It does get kind of messy so you want to make sure that you're wearing gloves and that you're working on top of a surface that you don't mind um, getting paint on. I was just using scrap cardboard here from my recycling and it works great. And you can pick this whole thing up and set it off to one side to dry and keep working on your desk. So as I'm doing this, I'm just tapping my fingers against the sides of the canvas just to encourage that paint to flow over the sides so they are completely covered. And then I added a couple of taps to that purple section at the top and it created these really cool drips. I really liked how this turned out and I added to it a little later and I kind of wish I didn't, but we'll get there when we get there. So now for this pink and purple one, it is so dreamy. I love how this one turned out. So I'm tipping that paint and just letting it stretch across the canvas exactly the same as I did with the wooden pieces and just encouraging it to flow nicely wherever it's needed and oh, it is so so pretty. I was actually looking at the runoff from this one. I'd used a little more paint because there were more colours and um, I couldn't let it go to waste. <laughs> so I grabbed a piece of watercolour paper and dabbed that into my overflow that was on the desk because it was just, it was too pretty to pass up. So I had to um, pick up as much of that as I could on some paper and then just set that to dry. You do want to use watercolour paper because there's a lot of moisture here and a lot of paint and regular paper wouldn't handle that as well. So I used two pieces and dabbed, um, dabbed them into this paint spill, I guess, and then just set those to dry as well. So now coming back to the canvases. So this is that first one that I kind of wish I'd left alone. I don't know, you guys tell me if you think it looked better before or after. My vote is for before. And I think that's in part because I worked without a pencil outline. 
I should know better. I should know myself better. I definitely work best with a pencil outline of whatever it is I'm trying to sketch. So first I drew a heart and then I filled it in with swirls and I just kept adding to it, hoping that I'd find the right combination for me to love this piece. And yeah, I kind of wish I'd left it alone, but as you can see, the paint pens work great on top of one of these pores as long as you leave it to fully dry. Now this second canvas, I learnt from my mistakes, I used a pencil first to sketch out what it was that I wanted and then I filled it in using the paint pens. Again, I'll have these linked below. They can be used on multiple different surfaces. You can even use them on like porcelain or glass or plastic, but you may have to heat set it and the instructions for doing that using your oven are on the packaging. So I'm sketching out love is all you need and a little arrow in red. And there they are side by side. I definitely prefer the one on the right, but let me know what you think. Now we're stepping away from paint to ribbon. <laughs> Look how much ribbon you get in this pack. It is insane. I cut down a couple pieces of each ribbon. So we had some selections and I'm going to make a few different things here. All of these ribbons come together in a bundle and then in addition to that I'm using some ribbon bindings. This is a little clamp that you just press onto the edge of the ribbon and it holds everything together. It is so easy to use and it just holds it all together nicely and you can make jewellery or, well, you'll see, I'm making multiple different things here. So here I'm actually working on a keyring and I've used some of the red ribbon and then I'm trimming off the ends. I decided I actually wanted to cut them at a diagonal and then I do heat seal these just using a lighter and um, just gently passing that through the flame to seal that together so it doesn't unravel. Once I had that clamp attached I'm adding some jump rings and um, it's kind of hard to see because they're so small and fiddly I do apologize but I'm just stretching open the jump rings linking them through and then using my clamp to seal it together and I'm doing that until I have a chain that is as long as I want and then I'll go ahead and add a keyring to the top. So next up I'm going to make earrings and this is a very similar process. This time I grabbed some of the pink ribbon and I'm cutting equal lengths out of three different ribbons. You want to make sure that you have your longest piece on the outside because we're going to fold these together to make a teardrop shape and if they're all the same size it won't have that nice separation inside. So you want your longest piece on the outside, a medium piece in the middle and your smallest piece on the inside and just fold those in half and it will make a really nice teardrop shape. Again I'm going to use one of these ribbon, uh, ribbon bindings and just clamp that together on the top of the ribbon. And then on top of that, I'm going to add a jump ring and an earring hook. You can see them on the desk there. And then once those are threaded, this is what the earrings look like. I'll show you those hearts a little later on. I forgot to add those at first. So next up for the ribbon crafting section of this video, I guess, I'm actually going to make a charm for my planner. Now you could use this as a bag charm as well. I think that would be really cute. And again, really similar. I'm just taking some of the ribbon and attaching it together using one of those clamps. And then I'm cutting the edges and adding some jump rings. This time I added a little lobster clasp and that's how I'm attaching it to my planner. Okay, so last but not least, we're gonna make some rose earrings. These are so easy to make and they look really sweet. I took some of the red ribbon and I'm just folding it in on itself and twisting. So you can see here my left hand twists and my right hand folds the ribbon in. It is pretty small so apologies if it's difficult to see. I've zoomed in so you can get an idea and at first it's going to seem like you're not doing anything. Um, but then slowly you'll start to see that rose form. Now I'm just taking a needle and some thread and just stitching right through that whole piece just to hold it all together. You could try to use a glue, like a fabric glue, to stick this as you're going, but it's just easier to stitch through it because it's an instant hold. Once I have them both made, I'll use some glue to attach an earring post to the back of each of these and let those set. And this is what they look like finished. And I have to say, not too bad for just a bit of folded ribbon and a couple minutes of your time. So here I'm remembering about those heart charms. Do you remember how we didn't add them earlier, but they were in the final images? So here's the footage of me adding those. You get all of these charms in a multi-pack. 
now for what I think is maybe my favorite project out of all of the ones that I've shown today. Let me know what your favorite is. I think this one is mine and um, it uses some really simple supplies. So I got this pack of heart-shaped coasters and I'm using the same paints that I've been using throughout this video as well as some foam daubers just to apply that paint over the top of each of them. There is so much that you could do with these wooden heart shapes. I'm keeping it really simple and I'm keeping them as coasters, but you could make like signs and banners and um, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. So um, I decided to keep it simple and my inspiration for this is the conversation hearts that you can buy at Valentine's Day. Um, we get love hearts in the UK, which aren't quite as bright and colourful. So I took my inspiration from the American equivalent, which is the conversation hearts or conversation candy, and um, decided to use these bright colours. So for the last two, I'm nipping back really quickly to paint pouring, and I'm just using the leftovers that were in my cup after making those two mini canvases. I was looking at the paint in the cup and I just couldn't bear to throw it away, not after I'd made such cute canvases with it, so I decided to paint pour on these two coasters, exactly the same as before, except I forgot to put my gloves on, and I'm using push pins in the back of this to create little legs so everything can drip off and it won't just pool in the surface and stick to my cardboard. So once I'd stretched out that paint I left everything to dry and then I'm going to come back in and add some more detail to the solid colour coasters using the paint pens again. So here we have them all completely dry. I'm leaving those two paint pour ones and then I've penciled in some text for each of the others and I'm using those paint markers again. You'll see that I dab the pen off to one side on a scrap piece of paper. That's just to help the ink to continuously flow. You just press down the nib and it encourages the ink to flow. You do have to do that for a few seconds when you first start these pens off because there won't be any ink at all, or any paint rather, I guess it's not ink, um, in the nib when you first get these. So I did some Google searching to try and remember um, the kind of messages that you get on these and then just picked out a few that I really liked and penciled those on and then went over them with the paint pens. One thing that's really great with these paint pens is that I would never be able to achieve such crisp lines using just a paintbrush. So I worked my way through each of these until they were all done. I let that dry and then I did add a layer of PVA glue just to help to protect this because it will have drinks sitting on top and I don't want anything to chip away. And I think I've showed my age with that call me one. Maybe it should be text me, but there we go. <laughs> So next I'm going to make some little sweet buckets. I think these would be adorable at a party as like little um, like favours. They're so sweet. So the metal buckets arrived with the handles kind of on the inside of the bucket and I wanted to change that so they were on the outside. So I just grabbed my pliers and gently bent the edges of the handle <laughs> until I could remove it and then I reinserted it the other way around. It's totally optional and you don't have to do that. It's just something that I wanted to change. So I did, which is great about these. They're fully customizable. Then I'm adding some of these heart shaped stickers to the outside just to kind of brighten it up and add a little bit of texture. I'm going to be filling each of these with sweets and treats. So I wanted them to be really nice and bright. So once I'd finished with the stickers, I then add some sprinkles to the outside using the paint pens. This could not be easier. This is my kind of painting. Um, it's familiar because it's a pen, which is great. And you just need to draw a short line. No rhyme or reason to it, just random. Keep changing colors and completely cover it until it's got all these gorgeous sprinkles on the back. I went ahead and did the same to all the other buckets and then added the sweets inside. And this is how they turned out. Now, the only challenge is for me not to eat them all. Okay, moving on to something non-edible. I'm safer around this. I have some inexpensive candles that I picked up. They are pink and purple, and I'm using the pink and purple paint markers just to add X and O, so like hugs and kisses, I guess, um, onto the front of these using the paint pens. 
Now, I don't actually follow the directions to heat set this. They do work on glass, as you can see, but I'm not following the instructions to heat seal it because I don't wanna melt my candle at the same time. And um, these are just going to be like a short-term decorative item, so I don't necessarily need to heat seal this for it to be permanent. If this was some glass artwork that I was gonna be keeping forever, then maybe that would be different and it would go ahead and heat seal it. But it's really easy to draw on the glass. The nibs in these pens are actually really sturdy. That's one thing I was really impressed with. I've used a couple different paint pens and I have to say, I really like these ones. So I added the purple paint to the um, pink candle and the pink paint to the purple candle. That's a lot of peas. <laughs> and that's how those turned out. You could add whatever message you wanted, but I just went with a simple like XO on each of them. So next I'm gonna use this pastel paper to make a decorative heart. This could not be easier. You just want to trim down your paper into strips that are all the same size. I went with one inch squares. So I cut it into strips and then cut it into squares and then I'm cutting each of those squares in half so we end up with triangles. I actually made far more than I needed but um, maybe I'll use them for some other pieces. Then I'm taking my frame, I've opened up the back and removed the back piece and then I'm just setting out the paper in the pattern that I want. This particular frame you can actually see straight through it so instead of having a wooden back it has a glass back but if yours has a wooden back you could tape all these pieces in place so they hold a little firmer and it's a little easier. I did have to be really careful when I was applying that second piece of glass not to shift anything and move it out of the way but I really like the fact that you can see through this frame and um, it looks just as pretty from the back as it does at the front. So you can just follow the template that I'm laying out here to create this heart piece. The hardest part of this is just picking which colors you want to go next to each other. And you could do this in a heart shape, you could do a flower, you can Google geometric designs and there are so many to pick from. And you can just chop up your paper into these triangles and then create your own. But this heart's a really simple one to get started with. So once I have all the pieces laid down, I love how you add that last piece and your eye goes, yep, that's a heart, I see it. <laughs> so once I had it done, I added in the top piece of the frame, twisted the back so it was held in place, and then I grabbed a paint pen again and just drew right over the top of that a simple love. I then went round the edges of the heart with a white pen, almost like some faux stitching, just making little dash marks all the way around. So this is how my heart frame turned out. And now onto the last project. If you remember those pieces of paper that I dried in the overspill of the paint pour, I decided to turn those into cards. I'm using some metal dies and a die cutting machine, but you could cut these by hand if you wanted to, just to cut these into shapes that I want to use on my card. Here I'm folding over some paper to make my card base and then I'll be able to stick that um, kind of marbled watercolour paper on the front. And I'm just using some wet glue to do that. And I'll stick that down and then I'm going to add some die cut words over the top. So I used some more of the pastel paper and cut out the word hugs using some more metal dies and then stuck those together using more of that liquid PVA glue. And then held those in place and that is card number one finished. So for the second card I decided to use a heart and to die cut that multiple times you could use a punch if that's what you have on hand and then I'm attaching those to another card base. This time I'm using a glue stick. I don't really know why I changed between the two but there we go they're pretty interchangeable for this project and then I'm drawing on top of each of those pieces again just using a paint pen to spell out the word love and then add some x's and o's. So that's a really great way how you can turn what would have been just the mess from your earlier project of the paint pouring into some marbled paper that you can then turn into cards. So that is it for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, do let me know in the comments. And if you're new here, you can hit subscribe and ring the bell if you wish to be notified whenever I post a new video. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye for now.